So this is the LG Stylo 3. It's an older phone, released about two years ago, and even when it was released it was, let's say, a middle-of-the-road phone in terms of specs. But there's something that's kind of special about this phone. It comes with a stylus, and that puts it in a category that's pretty rare. The only other uh, phone series that comes with a stylus is the Samsung Note. So it's a pretty unfair comparison, but if you're not really ready to spend $1,000, this is actually pretty worthwhile to consider. I paid $50 for this, new. Now that's kind of a good deal, it's a Black Friday deal, but 80 to 100 is not an unreasonable price to find if you're willing to look a little bit for a new one. And of course, used actually isn't that much better, but still better. Uh, so, you know, is this a 20th of the phone of the Samsung Note? No, actually, it's, it's a reasonable competitor if you don't like paying big bucks. So let's cut straight to the important part, which is the stylus. So it's stored here, comes out pretty easily, and when you take it out, you get some stuff here, but we're just going to look at the built-in drawing app for a second here. Now let's take a look at this thing. It's actually relatively sharp. Uh, you know, if you've ever used one of those passive capacitive styli, it's a lot uh, sharper than that. So it's pretty much akin to drawing with a pencil instead of drawing with a crayon. Uh, there's some lag, but uh, really if you're focusing on drawing, you won't notice that. And this program's got pretty much all the built-in features that you really want, <laughs> except you can apparently make them so tiny you can't even see it on the screen. Let's try that again. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So let me just give you an actual demonstration of why this is pretty awesome. So, um, you know, you can draw stuff that you could never draw by hand. Now, it's a little bit hard to draw uh, holding it loose and free like this. It's much better if you got uh, propped up against your legs or something like that. But, you know, you can actually do things right. Write your name. Imagine doing that with your finger, right? Okay, not horrible, but pretty hard to, to match. Now let's go back here and see if we can add that line through there. I mean, look at that crap, right? This is so much better. So if you care about being able to make fine drawings, this is the phone for you, unless you have $1,000 to throw around. So the stylus works pretty well. There's a little bit of lag. You can see that here, but you never notice it when you're actually using it. Uh, I've never used uh, the latest version of the Samsung Note, but I've used an older version. And I wouldn't say the lag is remarkably different between this phone and that phone. And just to be clear, what I mean by lag is that as you move the pen across, you can see the point that's being drawn is behind the point that the pen's touching the surface. Now, this is just maybe a uh, sort of thing that would uh, appeal to someone who has technical interest, but this is actually a capacitive stylus too just like those one dollar ones you can buy that are as fat as a crayon. So it's a little bit hard to get this thing to focus on it, but it's just a tiny little bit at the end of this thing. But the key difference is it's tiny. It's like a quarter of the size of one of those uh, crayon style, capacitive style eye. And somehow LG has tweaked this display in order to be able to detect this capacitive surface even though it's so tiny. So if you were to use this on a different phone, like for instance my Samsung S7, it will actually occasionally pick up a tiny little bit of a line from this. But, uh, you know, most of the time it doesn't. Whereas here, whatever they've done to the technology works really quite well. Okay, so that's the stylus. Uh, I actually find the built-in app to be tolerable. Uh, another good option is to use uh, Google Keep, which I actually don't use that often, so I don't even remember where I've got on here. Uh, we could look for it. Let's look for it with my favorite searching app here. And there's Keep. So you can, you know, use that to draw, do drawings too if you want. 
looks kind of nice. Now, one thing about this is since it's just a passive stylus, there's no pressure sensitivity, right? So I can push as hard as I want, and it's always the same thickness. Um, depends on whether or not you're using this for art or taking notes and doing simple drawings. So that's OK. Um, all right. I don't think there's a whole lot more to say about the stylus. If you want it, it's pretty handy. You can use it for uh, typing things, too. So uh, you know, if you've got really fat fingers and you've got to write an email, this does work. Now, I don't have such fat fingers, so I can take advantage of the fact that this thing's got a 5.7 inch screen, and I can just type like this. That's the nice thing about having a big screen, is you can actually basically touch type, which is weird because you're not really touch typing, right? There's no uh, buttons to be able to feel with your fingers, but you can actually just sort of type away, and as long as you're watching what you're doing up here, you can see the mistakes and fix them. So I actually find typing on this to be a really positive experience. The, style I, the style, LG Stylo 3 comes in two variants, believe it or not, depending on whether you're going with a fancy schmancy prepaid carrier or a bargain basement one. So this is the bargain basement one, and so it's the uh, 425. Uh, some of the other carriers, like uh, Boost, which actually I would consider to be fairly bargain basement too, uh, sells it for the 435, which gives you slightly better specs. Um, but I've, and I've, I've played with both of them a little bit. Uh, I couldn't say that it made a huge difference in terms of actual experience. Let's look at the actual specs for a second here. So here's the multi-core speed. Not particularly fantastic. And, you know, Geekbench has a list of other phones that they've uh, tested. And you'll see that uh, there isn't actually one on here low enough to be comparable. So, well, I guess, I guess the Nexus 5 is roughly comparable. Uh, single core which I think in some ways is more informative, is also relatively low, 644. There's nothing actually comparable. Even the LG5, the slowest thing in Geekbench, is faster. OK, so that sounds maybe a little bit concerning. But uh, is it really making a difference in real life? So uh, for writing email, of course it doesn't make a difference, right? This is instantaneous. Who cares? Right. Okay. What about web browsing? Well, web browsing is maybe a little bit more tricksy. So let's go to slash dot, my favorite way to waste time. And you'll see that it's not loading instantaneously. But it's not doing too bad. Uh, one of the nice things about having a big phone is you can actually sometimes be perfectly happy browsing in desktop mode and getting the full features of the website. Uh, and, you know, the zooming in is just fine. The scrolling is fine, you know, it's not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, on a more complex website, you can start to see some things that aren't super awesome. So, uh, slick deals uh, has a pretty resource hungry site, uh, probably just bad design. Um, and you can see that it takes a while for it to load the product images here. And this is actually pretty bad, right? It take, takes a while. So this I really notice. Um, most websites are not sucky like this, uh, thank goodness. Uh, now, I have a Samsung S7, which is a relatively old phone, but has pretty good specs, uh, unless you're talking about you know the brand new top of the line um, flagships. And this phone is slower, but you know, at the end of the day, or even really the start of the day, to be more accurate, which phone do I reach for when I'm at home? I reach for this phone. Why? Because I like the big screen. The big screen is really handy. Um, and I like having the stylus. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't have invested all that money in a nice, small Samsung S7 that I could put in my pocket and walk around town in, uh, or with, rather. Uh, and actually, you know, I, I probably will buy a bigger phone next time. But... Uh, this is a great phone just to have around the house, right, where pocketability doesn't matter so much. Um, much like every Android phone, there's a drop-down list of features here, and options. I'm going to put it in sideways mode. Here, here's the thing I love about having a big phone, right? I can browse this thing just like that, right? Standard desktop mode, no mobile 
accommodations, and it's perfectly readable, perfectly viewable, no problem. So, uh, and just to show you, it's it's the home page of Slick Deals that sucks. If you're just looking at you know one of the sub pages, perfectly fine, no problems whatsoever. So I would say performance is fine. It's not really that big a decrement versus the Samsung S7, which you know by Geekbench scores is about three times faster. So let's see. Now I don't really care too much about the the built-in apps, um, because you can always get your own. I, I do like to point out, however, that uh, LG comes with a perfectly reasonable file manager just built in. I actually think LG does a pretty good job of their Android skin. Uh, I think they get a lot of crap that they don't deserve. Uh, one thing that I actually think is really much nicer about this skin versus the S7 is the lock screen. So let's see if we can get it to come on with the lock screen. And of course we can't because uh, you know, Google's smart about that, and they don't show lock screen if it's just been off. But the, the lock screen is totally stock here, and that I really appreciate, where Samsung just sort of screwed it up. Uh, of course, with a nice big screen, this 5.7 inches, uh, you get um, uh, great media experiences. Uh, it's great to watch videos and stuff. Uh, let's see here. If we can pull up this particular phone's... Uh, specs on here. So this is the LG Stylo 3 for track phone. That's part of why it was so cheap. You know, I've never actually activated it. I just use it as a um, as a Wi-Fi device, but it's a great Wi-Fi device. Okay, so here I am looking at LG's website and, you know, it's perfectly viewable. And, uh, you know, here are some very exciting features. So this is the um, the cheaper version, like I was saying, with the 425. And there's a specs. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by reading them. But I do want to point out this one key thing, I think. Two gigabytes of RAM. That's really uh, small compared to a flagship, but it's actually perfectly sufficient. Uh, very few apps are going to actually have a hard time running with that much RAM. The only thing is you might find other apps having to be put to sleep in the background. But in practice, I don't really notice it. Okay. So is there anything more to say about this? Um, well, power button's in the back. It's a little weird. I think LG actually has a pretty neat feature here. It's called tap to turn on. And uh, there's the main reason why I don't use it all the time. Sometimes it doesn't respond. It also has tap to turn off, which uh, would be nice if it worked a little better. See, I got it right that time, but I do, I do sometimes get it wrong. Volume's on the side. It's actually a really thin phone. You know, for being so big, it's nice and thin. Which I guess, I mean, if you think about it, volume is probably the thing that, that they have to conserve across phones. So it's not so su surprising that a big phone like this would have a thin profile. Uh, it can get nice and bright outside. I mean, I, it's a joke to try and demonstrate this on the uh, camera here, but it, you know, it's perfectly viewable outside. Um, you got all your standard uh, quick access features here. All right, let's talk about one last thing that's kind of cool about this. So it's something that I really wish. Uh, more manufacturers did. And sadly, uh, LG now has a style of 4 and they went away from this. This phone can be taken apart and it can be taken apart really easily. So, you know, this is going to remind you of yesteryear for sure. There we go. Just took the right the back right off. Piece of cake. Now, here's what I want to uh, bring your attention to. Those are screws, not glue. It's not hard to get that screwdriver. It's not even a security bit. That's just a standard Phillips head. Go to Harbor Freight, spend $2, maybe 3 for a nicer set, so you can take this phone apart. Um, would you want to? Well, yeah, you might. It's actually um, trivially easy to do things like replace the screen if you break it, or replace uh, the earpiece or the speaker. Um, there's about 10 components in here that you could replace if you wanted to. Of course, the screen's the one you're most likely to replace. Uh, when I did that, and I actually did replace the screen in one of these, um, it took me about 15 minutes. Uh, and that's because I didn't know what I was doing. Now, I'm no standard, I'm no repair guy, so you know anyone who actually knows what the heck they're doing could easily do it faster. Um, and then, of course, look at this nice big battery, right? That's great. So I don't use this with cell phone service, so I can't really speak to how well that works. 
but as a Wi-Fi device, and especially a Wi-Fi device that keeps Wi-Fi off when the phone itself is off, I get a week of use out of this between charges. So what a great Wi-Fi device. Probably a pretty decent phone too. I see if that tap on thing works. And see, it's such a great fe feature in theory, but in reality, it's not that good. Maybe if we go a little slower. There we go. Okay, so maybe maybe I just haven't uh, practiced with that feature enough. Great in theory and practice, maybe questionable. So to summarize, if you're a bargain hunter, if you're not made of money, this is a nice phone. There's things that could be better about it. The camera. So I can't really demonstrate the camera, um, but the camera is just tolerable. You know, here we are uh, indoors. It looks okay until you try to take a picture of something that's dark, and then it doesn't do so great. So daylight actually perfectly fine. Nighttime with house lights, okay. And nighttime with minimal lighting, just just messy. So that that's how you know this is a bargain based on the phone is. The camera is serviceable. And, you know, compared to uh, my Nexus 4 that I had a long time ago that was also kind of a middle-of-the-line phone but cost $400, it's better than that. Um, you can see here the uh, back hasn't been snapped on all the way. But look at that. That's all it took. Just push and you're done. You know, compare that to one of these flagship devices where you've got to, you know, heat it up with... Uh, bag of rice and then uh, use a splooger and a suction cup to pull it apart and then goodness knows if it'll ever stick together again properly. So nice. And of course you got your standard uh, audio jack and your standard uh, USB not see the uh, old-fashioned micro USB. Of course you can't see that can you? But anyway it's a standard micro. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah older phone but it's a nice toy. Uh, uh, I would recommend it for a younger person in a heartbeat. That stylus is a lot of fun. Uh, and I'd recommend it for an older person. Uh, the stylus is, makes it a lot easier to touch those tiny little keys. In fact, I really wish that there were more phones with styli. You know, this big form factor, you don't really need a stylus um, because the buttons are so big, right? you can type on that just fine. Websites, same idea, um, but, uh, you know, no one makes a smaller phone with stylus. Just going to give you another example here of scrolling. See, scrolls just fine. And look how nice and quickly that loaded, right? It's really just slick deals. Slick deals is crap. Uh, they need to hire some new designers, maybe me. <laughs> All right, so we are done, and I hope you found this review of an older phone to be informative. It's based on actual experience using this phone for about six months and uh, not just uh, five minutes with a pre-release model or a day with a complimentary model sent to, you know, key reviewers. I'm an end user. I spent my own money on this and I'm very satisfied that I did. Thank you.